bit and ask you because, uh, you know, um, poor writers who are listening to this are going to say, my, my God, Mary Bartik must have a superpower. She came out of nowhere. This wonderling thing happened and the stars aligned. But this was yeah. not your first book. You've been writing for quite a while. You've been uh, nominated for a Pushcart Prize at one point and, and several other awards and, and in literary magazines. So when did you start writing originally? Um, I was, I was a um, secret writer. My sister's a writer, and my father was a writer. Um, my mother was a musician, and um, but my father was also a painter. And so there was a lot of, even though my father wasn't around, they, you know, his we knew what he did, <laughs> and so there was always um, a lot of art and culture around. And so I, I wrote, um, I wrote a lot of poetry when I was young, and little fairy tales and essays and little stories. But um, I. I, I was very secret. It was a secret thing. And it wasn't until I would say when I was about 30, 29, 30, I moved to Italy for a while. I lived in Italy for a while on this farm. And uh, no one, I, no one spoke English. And I, I, you know, I, 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 so I became fluent in Italian and I thought in Italian, I dreamed in Italian and, and that really impacted how I, I started writing these very, these short, strange sort of speculative fiction kind of stories. And I, I um, was still making art cause that's what I still painting, drawing, but I was also writing these little stories. And but when I came back to the States, um, I just, a light bulb went off. I was doing, I did a lot of music. I was work, always working in museums to sort of support my art, art habit because I was a visual artist. I still am. And I worked in museums, um, as a museum educator. And, um, I did these a lot, worked a lot with kids and, um, I would give kids a tour, say of ancient Egyptian art and I would do it all through stories like myths and and myths and 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 folk tales and legends and then I would make an art project with them that related to the the thing I just talked about um and it a light bulb went off one day and I just thought oh I could I should do put a book together I should put a book series together because people teachers teachers and parents keep asking me for all these ideas and how to do this and how to do that. And, and I'll just put a book series together. So I made up a sample. I didn't know anything when I, I didn't, I asked a, a friend at the time to help me, um, you know, sort of put a sample like dummy book together. Long story short, I, I, I got a publisher. I, I got, um, I, I signed on with Harper Collins and did a about 30 books. And there, it was called uh, um, the Ancient and Living Culture Series. And so it was a little bit of history, a little bit of um, geography, folk tales. Um, and it circled around the symbols of these different cultures that were then, you could pull them out as stencils and made, I invented projects for kids to do. Um, then I did a, another little series on Native Americans um, for really little kids. Um, cause those, those books were for middle grade. This is when multicultural books kind of became, you know, big on the scene in the early nineties, mid nineties. So, um, yeah, I wrote all these books for kids, but I also was doing, and they were nonfiction, but they were folk tales. There were folk tales in them. And, um, meanwhile, I started writing I don't know what they were. They were for adults. They were sort of essays, but they were also a bit fantastical. Um, uh, and and uh, I was still writing poetry. I was always writing. Um, and then, uh, I don't know. I did a, um, oh, I had a uh, Fulbright in, <laughs> this is a long story. You know, you should, Tell your readers, just get my memoir called The Memory Palace. It's all in there. <laughs> <laughs> they get the whole thing. And they get the whole thing. There's a chapter in there about when I lived in the Arctic. I lived in this uh, Sami, you know, Lap um, village um, on this Fulbright. And, and I did a book of folk tales, illustrated folk tales on, from their culture that they published over there. And um, and then I can't, I don't know. Then I ended up, I ended up... Um, 
deciding to go to graduate school again. I went to, you know, I had gone to graduate school before for painting and film. And then I decided to go apply for um, a graduate degree in writing um, post first brain injury, because I thought that would help with muscular reading and, and community building because I felt so isolated after, um, you know, being not, you know, kind of not, not being around many people for a while because of my, um, cognitive issues. So, um, and, and th in, in that program at U university of Massachusetts in Amherst, you know, I, I, I wrote nonfiction, I wrote short stories and poetry, but I came out of there with that, me with that memoir, which ended up, you know, doing pretty well. And that was the New York times bestselling, blah, blah, blah. You know, won that big award that no one can pronounce. <laughs> the national book critics circle award. <laughs> I can't, I can't even remember what it is, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I put in my time and I've published other things and, um, the yeah. writing those, uh, 30 nonfiction books did that kind of teach you to the routine of sitting down every day, focusing and, and getting in yeah. your writing early. Um, Actually, being an artist for years, really, you, I think the thing is you got to be compulsive. I'm compulsive. I, I, I can't not make something. I can't not, um, you know, like last night I was, um, I, I didn't have the brain power to write. So, you know, I was like. I'll draw an octopus. And then you know, I was like drawing, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I keep, there's a sketchbook in every, every room. There's a, I have this crazy rogue gallery in my, um, in my bathroom. I have, I have, uh, these post-its and I, I have to, the, the deal is that, um, this is probably gross, but as long as it takes me to pee, Sorry, I will, I have to draw five little characters really fast on these post-its and they all go up on the wall and so my my bathroom is just and um move them around and um so i'm always doing something i always have to make something i have a little comic series that i work on periodically called phil and dave two gay cats in chicago <laughs> and they're <laughs> these, these guys who sometimes become cats sometimes just have cat heads and they're it's all done in post-its so compulsion and you do a little bit of writing. I remember I read that at one point you were in five different musical groups at the same time and singing in a choir, plus your art, plus your fiction. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous. All okay, I didn't right have kids. Jealousy. I had no kids. Um, I'd never had TV except for, I think my mother, like once in a while, someone would give us a broken down black and white TV and my mother would watch Johnny Carson and that's it. So I was completely clueless about television. Still don't have a TV, have no high speed. Um, uh, always carried a sketchbook. Um, didn't even have a car drive it until I was 40. So I had a lot, you know, I just, I, I, I think I've just always, um, I just have to make stuff. Um, the music's been a little problem because I have not had luck returning to that after all these. I've had five brain injuries since 1999. Not good. Um, music has been a little hard. Um, but yeah, I was, I was in a big Baroque choir singing. And then I was in a, a gamelan orchestra. <laughs> Smith College is Gramelin Orchestra for Ind Indonesian Shadow Puppets. And then I was in a, you know, played harp at a trio. And, um, you know, yeah, I just, I was in a little Celtic and medieval music group. And so I've slowly been getting back into music. Um, but I, I think it's going to take um, a lot of focus. Um, it's going to take me having a break from writing and and at least uh like maybe going to in a, a complete a, like an immersion situation i was supposed to go to um celtic music camp last summer and i just couldn't do it um 
but um, that's kind of on my bucket list to, to do something like that. I do miss it. Are you uh, compulsive in life as well? You're mentioning that you've, you've had uh, endless stories. I'm sure you could share with us from, from all the places that you've lived and all the different things that you've done. Do you just get it in your mind that you want to do a thing and then just go do it? Pretty much. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> I mean, I mean, um, I think I've always been that way. Like I remember, <laughs> I re I remember, um, when I was four, I have a really clear memory. My mother said to me, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And I said, "An artist." And she said, "Anything else?" And I said, "I said, um, I want to be a disc jockey too." And be, and the reason is I thought that a disc jockey was someone who rode a horse, um, made music and projected it on the and you know broadcast it on the radio and 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 at the same time you could be up on the horse, you could be drawing. So so that was the deal. Um, 